On behalf of my colleague, Dr. Matt Spangler and me, welcome to this module entitled U.S. Genetic Evaluation Systems. I'm Bob Weber, and I'll be your presenter for this module. I'm a professor at Kansas State University and have an appointment as an extension beef specialist, as well as a researcher in beef cattle genetics. I hold a PhD in animal breeding and genetics from Cornell University. I have more than 20 years experience working in beef cattle genetic evaluation as both a breed technical staff member as well as an academic. An overview of today's module includes an overview of genetic evaluation objectives, some discussion on data flow, how pedigrees, phenotypes, and genotypes move through our beef value chain, some discussion on contemporary grouping strategies in for each of the various trait definitions, a discussion on bases and EPD averages, a review of single and multi-breed evaluation structures, and also some discussion on multi-association or international evaluations and how those systems work. The objective of genetic evaluation can be summarized very simply as turning data into information. In the U.S. beef system, that means taking phenotypes, so individual performance records and groups of animals, data, as well as their pedigrees and genomic information, and processing that through a series of steps to produce expected progeny differences and selection indexes. These EPDs and selection indexes are, then are ultimately used by seed stock and commercial producers in their selection systems. As we consider our genetic evaluation system, it's important to recognize that the data makes a number of stops from its origin at a seed stock producer um, and then ultimately into the hands of another seed stock producer or commercial producer for use in selection. The first stop for many of these records is data collection on the farm or ranch. Those records are processed uh, online or delivered via paper records to the Breed Association for inclusion in their database. The Breed Association then moves that information through a series of quality control steps and ultimately into a data extract that's used by a genetic evaluation service provider. In many cases here in the United States, that genetic evaluation service provider is an internal step within the Breed Association. In some cases, the data moves externally to a third party for genetic evaluation. Once the data is evaluated, um, it is processed through a number of additional edit steps um, to form uh, a system of equations that are solved to produce expected progeny differences. Oftentimes, those are genomically enabled. So a combination of pedigree, performance data, and genomic information is combined in a single step to produce EPDs and subsequently selection indexes. That information is returned uh, to a database and ultimately is made available online um, to uh, seed stock and commercial beef producers through the association's web portal. Genomic information takes a slightly different route. Um, a producer will collect a DNA sample on an individual animal that's of interest for their breeding program and selection system. Um, that sample is oftentimes either sent directly to a breed association or in some cases directly to a genotyping service provider. That genotyping service provider processes the DNA sample um, to produce high density genotypes. Those genotypes are subsequently returned via a pipeline to the genetic evaluation service provider. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes those service providers are internal to the breed association. In other cases, they're an external third party. That genomic information is data-based, processed for quality control, animal pedigrees inspected for Mendelian inheritance to validate pedigrees, and ultimately that information is moved into a single step genetic evaluation to produce EPDs. So it's a combination of both phenotypic data, pedigree information, and genomic data to produce EPDs. Those resulting EPDs then are returned to the producer, typically via the Breed Association's website and web portals.
One key aspect of genetic evaluation is the idea of contemporary grouping. Contemporary group is a group of animals that are given an equal opportunity to perform. In many cases, they're of similar age and sex as a requirement for formation of an individual contemporary group. Contemporary groups are defined via a set of rules to identify fair competition within the herd. Oftentimes, these contemporary groups are formed from a set of standardized performance attributes at the breed association, plus supplied management information from the seed stock producer. Contemporary groups form the basis of all genetic comparisons. They're simply the mechanism we use to identify uh, animals that have been given an equal opportunity to perform. The idea is this. Animals that have all been given the same environment or reared in the same environment and under the same conditions have the same opportunity to perform. And thus the differences we observe since environment is constant, the differences we find are largely due to genetic differences. As I mentioned, contemporary groups are assigned through a combination of data rules and breeder submitted management information. The data rules um, at the association level typically follow a set of Beef Improvement Federation guidelines. Those guidelines constrain animals to the same environmental effects. So a simple way to think about contemporary group is animals born in the same year, in the same herd, in the same season of production, and typically of the same gender. As we think about contemporary grouping, starting at birth groups, they're usually the largest. As we progress through changes in management and production, contemporary groups tend to get smaller over time as they become more fragmented based on differential performance or measurement dates. Some contemporary group definitions. So as we think about individual trait groups, calving ease and birth weight, for example, are typically the largest contemporary groups. And they're formed by analyzing records that are from the same breed or herd code, born in the same year and season, of the same gender or sex, have the same production management code, um, and the same reproduction code, typically. So animals that are um, natural service and AI calves are in one group, and animals that are embryo transfer calves are either in another group or forced into single animal contemporary groups due to the recipient dam effect. Weaning weight, another commonly reported trait in our genetic evaluation system, utilizes the birth contemporary group information and then adds to that criteria um, weaning management code, which oftentimes includes some kind of pasture management code, um, as well as the weaning weight date, so the date the animals were observed for a weaning phenotype, and their weaning gender. Weaning weight dates um, typically are used to define age windows for calves, and oftentimes under BIF recommendations, those range from 160 days for the youngest calf to 250 days for the oldest calf. Yearling weight, another commonly reported phenotype in our production system, uses weaning weight contemporary group, which again is a subset then of the birth contemporary groups and management codes. And adding to weaning weight criteria adds a yearling management code, a yearling weight date, and yearling gender. Again, defining situations where animals have been given an equal opportunity to perform. An example of breaking yearling contemporary groups might be um, a condition where animals are being developed for a bull sale, but a subset of animals um, are segregated and hand fed for an exposition. Those animals that are segregated and hand fed experienced a different environment than the main group of bulls that were being developed for the bull sale. As such, they should be forced into separate contemporary groups by management code. More contemporary group definitions here. Uh, for ultrasound traits, those contemporary groups are a subset of the yearling weight um, contemporary group in addition to a management code. Sometimes this is the same as their yearling management code. Um, and of course, scan date. So animals scanned on different observation dates will be forced into separate yearling ultrasound contemporary groups. For carcass traits, oftentimes weaning or yearling contemporary group data is used as the base contemporary grouping. Management code, again, if different uh, than yearling management uh, groupings, um, on feed date, harvest date, to control days on feed, 
um, grading or slaughter date, carcass gender, um, and breed of dam are often components used in carcass data contemporary group. For some of the reproductive traits, contemporary grouping becomes somewhat more difficult. Heifer pregnancy, for example, uses yearling weight contemporary group, breeding management code, breeding season start and end dates, um, exposure information, whether they were exposed or not, um, to natural service sire or AI, uh, as well as breeding pasture or sire group. Mature cow weight includes information about breeder herd code, the year, the date measured, cow age at measurement, um, as well as birth management code and body condition score as a requirement for mature cow weight. For stability, the contemporary group consists of breeder herd code, birth year, herd code in which the cow produced a calf to weaning. One of the challenging aspects of EPDs is understanding the comparison strategy. Sometimes it's important to understand what the base of the EPDs or what the EPD averages are to make a comparison of animals that are available for selection, to understand which ones are superior or inferior for any given trait. So an EPD base is simply a reference point in the genetic evaluation. It's used as a base point, if you will, um, to make comparisons. Base, though, should not be confused with group averages due to genetic trend. For example, the base may be different than the EPDs for a group of active sires, active dams, or non-parents. Breeds have separate bases due to separate genetic evaluations, i.e. they have disparate data sets. They're not analyzed in a common data analysis, and so they have separate bases. The challenge with this is that it produces EPDs that are not directly comparable. To compare EPDs from different genetic evaluations produced here in the United States, it's important that producers use the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center across breed EPD adjustment factors. These adjustment factors adjust for both base and scale effects um, to make EPDs from various breeds directly comparable, primarily to Angus, although through a variety of uh, computations, we can make different breed comparisons directly using the across breed adjustment factors. So here's an example of a base year for the American Angus Association. Angus has a base that's been constant for some time and it is based in 1984. So the interpretation here is that animals born in 1984 are forced to average zero for birth weight, weaning weight, and yearling weight. You can see based on the trends presented here, the blue line for birth weight, the red line for weaning weight, and the green line for yearling weight, then Angus breeders have made substantial selection progress over time. So if we look at calves born in say 2010, their birth weights are roughly about two. Their weaning EPD on average was about 40 or 41, and their yearling weight EPD is about 80. So their birth year breed averages are substantially different than the base year average of zero. A number of possible bases exist for genetic evaluations in beef cattle. One of them is a fixed group. So for instance, a foundation group of animals may be forced to average zero. A fixed group was popular amongst the continental European breeds for a period of time because there was a small list of identified bulls that were the foundation animals in the population. And they were forced to average zero. Another common birth, another common uh, base is birth year. So, for example, the American Angus one that we just looked at uses a birth year for the base. And so animals born in 1984 were forced to average zero for their EPDs. This simply creates an additive adjustment factor for all the animals that came out of the genetic evaluation to result in these birth year averages being zero. Other possibilities for base include some combination of breed fraction or birth year. Um, for a number of years, the American Simmental Association in their multi-breed evaluation used a combination of breed genetic effects to a common year to establish their base. Another popular um, base for a period of time was a population or floating base. So it was simply the population average across the entire data set. 
which naturally comes out of the genetic evaluation with mean zero due to some of the statistical properties of the genetic evaluation. One of the challenges with a floating base or a population base is that the zero point moves with genetic trend. And so as the population expands and is under selection, the base point moves in time. One other feature that's important to understand in US genetic evaluations is oftentimes they evaluate single or multi-breed data sets. So in some cases, a breed association may have an evaluation that's for one breed and only one breed. Examples in the US are Angus and Hereford, um, or provide uh, genetic evaluation processes to handle animals from various breed backgrounds. So an example of this is the International Genetic Solutions Evaluation that provides a multi-breed uh, data analysis process that fits individual breed effects um, for animals that are combined of two or more breeds. So it computes the additive genetic differences between breeds and adjusts them to a common breed base as part of the edit procedures. Um, it also accounts for differences in heterotic effects or heterosis or hybrid vigor. And the idea here is that we can make multi-breed contemporary groups of purebred and crossbred animals by adjusting out the benefit that crossbred animals receive from heterosis for the various traits as necessary. Other features of multi-breed evaluations include differential age of dam effects by breed or breed fraction. Another common feature of genetic evaluation systems here in the US is incorporation of data from either multiple domestic associations or multiple international associations. So we'll provide some examples of those. In the case of a multi-association international evaluation, data is combined from multiple breed associations. They use common trait definitions and adjustment strategies for their phenotypic records and often report on a common base and scale. They produce country by country or country by breed genetic trends. Some examples of this might be, for example, the American Simmental Association and the Canadian Simmental Association. They combine data via the IGS evaluation to produce a set of EPDs for Simmental animals and report those um, grouped by country and breed fraction um, into a variety of genetic trends and percentile tables for animals, either in the American Simmental Association or the Canadian Simmental Association. These evaluations may be single or multi-breed. So for example, um, the IGS evaluation is also a multi-breed evaluation besides being multi-country. So in addition to having Simmental uh, evaluated in the US and Canada, it also includes US and Canadian um, Gelpi, um, North American or US limousine and Canadian limousine, um, US and Australian and Canadian shorthorn, uh, Canadian um, Red Angus and American or Red Angus Association of America records are all included in that same evaluation. So as you can see, they can be a combination of not only multi-association and international, but also multi-breed. In the United States there are some other examples. Um, Angus, for instance, includes um, U.S. Angus records for the Black Angus population, but also the Canadian Black Angus records from the Canadian Angus Association. Hereford produces a Pan-American evaluation that includes U.S., Canadian, Uruguayan, and Argentinian records. And we've already talked about the IGS evaluation that includes U.S., Canadian, Australia um, as the primary countries, but also includes breed groups from Simmental, Limousine, Gelpie, Red Angus, Shorthorn, Keenina, Solaire, Canadian, Red Angus, uh, as well as South Devon. So in summary, the goal of genetic evaluation systems is to provide timely and accurate genetic predictions to enable efficient selection. So the evaluations are the result of a combination of phenotypic and performance records, as well as genomic information to provide useful genetic predictions. We've seen that breeds have a variety of different strategies for setting their base for comparison within their own genetic evaluation. 
we've discussed that contemporary groups provide a mechanism for all genetic comparisons, and we talked about a number of strategies based on trait groupings for those contemporary group formations. A number of U.S. breeds participate in single and multi-breed evaluations, and we've denoted the differences between those. And there are a variety of data sharing and evaluation systems in the U.S. that enable international, so multi-breed and or multi-country genetic evaluations so that EPDs for those populations are comparable both in the United States and around the world. For continued learning, I would encourage you to complete module number four, which is a discussion of U.S. trait definitions. Some related concepts to our discussion here include understanding EPDs, that's in module two, trait definitions, the next module, module number four, a discussion of heterosis and hybrid vigor in module 11, and an overview of breed complementarity, which is module 12. For more information on the U.S. Livestock Genetics Export Group, please see their website at https colon slash slash www.uslge.org.